So let us compare the centralized and decentralized systems as a kind of quickly as a kind of policy. So this is a typical super estate plan plant which is actually highly demanding on investments. You need much capital to come into that. It <coughs> demands land. It need a lot of land because it is the aeration that is kind of happening there and it also needs management capacity. You know it needs kind of trained and educated kind of manpower to kind of you know run it. And even if you have all this it is an end of the pipe solution. Anybody wants to comment on that word? It is an end of the pipe solution. Yeah, so that is why you need trained knowledge. I am not critiquing, I am telling what are the demands of that system. So the point is you know, what is the end of the pipe solution? Yeah, so that means you know the entire waste has to come to one point. Yes. It is not you know because you are kind of centralizing it. Huh? So the calculations tell that 70 percent of the cost is for connecting sewers, it is not for the plant. And I will tell you tomorrow the kind of you know what are the kind of dangers of that also you know the plant versus the sewer kind of an issue. So the point is that so you are not <coughs> acknowledging the pollution. The more the pollution the merrier because you have pumping stations anyway it will reach the last point. So no, so you, you do not have an awareness about pollution when you have a end of the pipe solution. You think that you know everything can be brought here it can be treated. So nobody takes responsibility of their own pollution because they think that flush and forget. So this is it, it is very convenient you can flush and forget that is the, the one issue and it's, it is it's, it, it is transported long distances, treated well, it has improved the public health in European towns, uh, capital energy and skill intensive but it is uh, available by national and over overseas funding and you have you may get ready made consultants also. So if you are international financial institutions funding it, you have ready made consultants who will come and give you, give you the plan of this also. So it is that way it is very very attractive to an urban local body if you get that. And then it is it's, it's, it's perceived to be the ideal solution globally. So that means you know it is attractive for politicians if the if he brings in a super treatment plan, it is very good for contractors who will build it and then it is very good for the engineers who will facilitate that is not it. So everybody loves a good STP. Nobody will be against that, whoever will be taking the decisions. But there are disadvantages. One is that you know your technology choice and related decisions are always made at the national level or at the state level. It is never learned at the kind of a local level. Now with decentralization is slowly picking up like you know urban local bodies are also can be taken. It is very costly and it can lead the governments to indebtedness which also I will be mentioning tomorrow. All these issues we will be kind of um, you know discussing tomorrow so I am not going into that. What could be the kind of problems in at the level of governance of a centralized uh, you know solution. Then we have something called the emergent solutions which you know I did not actually mention in our European experience. Um, what is happened is that you know this, this mainstream solutions that became very costly. So in Europe and US what is happening is that you know they are trying to recycle these waste also, recycle it into agriculture, recycle it into other you know non-human kinds of uses and things like that. So there is a kind of there is a new centralized solutions which actually address the problem of recycling. And then the last point is that you know there are emergent decentralized solutions which actually 
tells that you don't have to take the you know waste anywhere can you do it at the point itself treating at the point itself so it's called the on site sanitation systems oss huh? so uh, these are so what are the advantages of this one is you know it prioritizes treatment where it is created like septic tank is an example of you know a, an on site sanitation system if you have a good septic tank then you don't need to kind of take it to anywhere else like you, you, if you segregate your solid waste there itself can the organic be treated in your own home and can the plastics be kind of taken to somewhere and you know kind of get recycled also you know so you don't have to have big systems to kind of do that um so some systems use kind of you know kind of use a lot of you know there are the two things that you have to kind of now familiarize it one is gray water one type of water is gray water gray water is water from bathroom kitchen all those kinds of things and black water is water that's coming out of the toilet so in a centralized system you need a cocktail you kind of get it all together because you need a lot of water because your carriage is through water water carriage the technology is a water carriage technology so you need a lot of water so there's a lot of waste wastage of water also when you bring these systems together so can you kind of you know treat them separately is one question so if black water is treated in a very good septic tank and if gray water is treated you know it doesn't mean much treatment actually it needs a kind of settling and some kind of you know filtration and then it can be openly kind of go into the so this actually kind of if you separate the flows you know it can actually make the treatment much more easier and less costly also and it can be designed for small scale so it can be flexible and it can be contextually adapted systems and you know actually in the nusp national urban sanitation policy for the first time government actually promotes this kinds of this kinds of systems and there is you know so there is a lot of you know and then there is a systems approach also where uh, the flow from one stream can actually kind of get into another stream also like you know the like what he was telling about you know the fstp if you treat it well it can go into agriculture and you know so so those kinds of possibilities are also there you know your solid waste if it gets into you know biogas your fuel consumption you know your cng consumption also can come down so it's no longer a waste it becomes a resource so those are the possibilities that we are talking about in emergent solutions you know why i am telling this is you know it's also something to do with the period that we are living in also you know in the 50s and 60s it was a lot of optimism with industrial revolution everything has to be big and everything has to be expensive and you know ford is ford is kind of production technologies also you know where ford discovered that you know it, there can be big production systems there could be big kind of you know um, what do you call um, uh, where centralized systems can be there labor can be you know given a middle class kind of a you know a status all this but over a period of time those production systems have crumbled now it's all very decentralized systems a car is produced a tire is produced somewhere you know your uh, gear is produced somewhere and then it's flexible production and and uh, so labor is informalized you know so that's the way you know the production systems are moving also so that's the first problem with you know the kind of not industrial technologies post industrial technologies are emerging second environment in the old production system environment was not a major kind of an issue so with the environment level awareness we are interested in sustainability and the third element is affordability here the state or the industry or somebody has to really invest and in the in the other one we can have more affordable technology so affordability and sustainability becomes two major you know kind of pillars of your thinking my generation did not have to think about it but your generation definitely has to think about these issues also when we talk about development so and that becomes this you know then then this decentralized systems become much more attractive than 
you know, whatever we are talking about. So, DCLA systems are mostly individual units and scaling up needs more institutional innovations, you know, which we will be talking about later. Um, there are only a few service providers. So, how do you kind of train others? That's, that's a challenge that we have. And then, um, you know, this is also septic smart is a very interesting thing, you know, 2016-17, I spent one year in University of Berkeley. So, the week I went there, there is a septic smart week in September in US because they found that, you know, they can't, cannot afford these kinds of big systems. For example, there was a, you know, a professor who actually calculated in the next five years, how much investment do you need to kind of, you know, um, uh, rehabilitate your systems, your big systems, you know. It's actually 3.6 trillion dollars you need. You need 3.6 trillion dollars to kind of make your water and sanitation systems better. Why? You have invested your technology, you are locked in your technology to that. And we have locked in only 16 percent in India. 33 percent in class 1 and 2 cities we found. If you take the entire Indian uh, scenario, we have only 16 percent of those kinds of things. That means, we have 84 percent more scope to get into sustainability, sustainability and affordability. That means, we can leapfrog to sustainability, Tavla Chatam in Malayalam. We can leapfrog to sustainability. We do not have to go through the kind of problems that they are facing. You know, like industrial agriculture, it is actually facing a lot of problems. Green revolution agriculture, industrial agriculture is facing a lot of problems and people are painstakingly coming to organic agriculture by subsidies and things like that. Our agriculture is mostly organic. So, why should we go there and then come back? You know, so that is one thing that your generation should be thinking about also. You know, my generation did not have the kind of possibility to think like that because we have only one kind of a thinking which we were taught. You can actually think about sustainability and affordability which will give you totally different solutions. So, you can leapfrog into sustainability where, where the Americans will take 100 more years to kind of do that. So, we do not have to become US in the next 100 years and think another 100 years to get into sustainability because by the time they are already into thinking about sustainability, you understand. So, that is where these possibilities are there, these kinds of technologies. So, but it needs many other things, you know, you need local capacity building, you need local institution building, you need a lot of behavioral changes and cooperation you need local regulation compliance, you know. So, all this we will be talking about in the LAP case, how we are trying to address these issues to make it work. It is not as easy as the other one. If you need an STP here, tomorrow ADB or you know JICA will give you a funding, consultants will come from Delhi, plan it all for you. But here you do not have money, you do not have the techno ready made technology, you do not have any consultants and you do and but you have local materials and all to kind of build that you know. So, how do we kind of proceed that is the question that we are going to ask. So, this is the exercise which also we do not know, need to do now, but list out the you know list out the advantages and disadvantages of centralized and decentralized approaches to sanitation. Second, have you seen any decentralized inter interventions in neighborhood or anywhere? Who is planning sanitation in your town? I think the last question can be a very interesting question. Who is planning sanitation in your town? Huh? Municipality. Huh? Municipality. Anybody else? Municipality is planning? Huh? Panjayat is planning. Group C. You have any idea who is planning sanitation? Huh? 
exactly <laughs> yeah development authority you are a planner town planners yes do they plan is the question what infrastructure what infrastructure But then why are this water body so unclean if we are doing planning? So we will talk about this tomorrow. What is the kind of policy and governance that are there and what are the kind of limitations of that? Huh? So keep these questions in mind and you know kind of work on it. Yeah, I think you know we will be doing this in a major way tomorrow but quickly to tell you uh, there are certain global discourses, you know, like SDG, you know, like sustainable development goals and things like that, which comes through Government of India, international financial institutions. There is a state public utility like Kerala Water Authority or board, you know, so th th those are uh, responsible. And now according to the current thinking, the whole thing should be done by the urban local body, which is actually a heavy burden to them. They do not have the capacity. Whereas this public utility like Kerala Water Authority have engineers, but they do not have the mandate to do it. In a new decentralized Panjayat Raj, you know, Nagarpalika kind of a context. Then the problem is that, you know, this funding actually comes to an SPV, special purpose vehicle through consultants and things get problematic. That we will discuss tomorrow. So the scope of this is that, you know, we are asking the question, can local academic institutions and NGOs and all help the municipality to plan it. That is the challenge that we are asking. Huh? So this will detail, in detail we will kind of uh, discuss it tomorrow. 